beautiful summer's day. And he opened the door, and, there's, and it was just... <laughs> it was, he said, would you like some muesli? <laughs> <laughs> so I said, oh, yes, please. So we sat out on... They had tiny little um, grass at the back of the house, not, not garden as such, but... And we just sat out there, cross-legged, eating muesli and talking. And then he said, I've got something to give you. And out of his trousers pocket, he bought a little piece of paper, and I opened it, and it was the most beautiful love poem. And I looked at him and he said, he said, I'm in love with you. And I was, and I said, oh, well, all right. Um, and I was absolutely speechless. But I knew, I knew that it was right. And I, at that time, I was living with a very dear friend of mine who is now, who's a jeweller. And I went home that evening after work. And I said to Mick, I said, I'm leaving. He said, I said, no, I said, I'm going away. And he said, oh, well, where are we going? I said, no, I am going away. He said, what do you mean? I said, well, I've met somebody. How long have you known him, Barilla? I said, oh, about three hours. <laughs> and I left that evening, went round to Mark's house in my little comma-cob van, and we spent four nights sleeping on Wimbledon Common. We love to boogie. We love to boogie. Jitterbug boogie. Bowling pretty boogie. We love to boogie on Saturday night. Belinda made thin, it's got a Cadillac phone. Jamie lost a cherry walking all the way home. The passion of the earth blasted his mind. It was wonderful, it's so stimulating, and suddenly he'd be reading something, and he'd say, oh, listen to this, and then, he'd re and then he'd have a whole two hours conversation about it. And it's a wonderful person to live with, very, um, nothing mundane about it. With his little snake head, with a tail for his high, the jitterbug left his smile to the sky, when you black velvet cape and you stole by the hat, beep up, baby, the dance is where it is. Be an innovator, anyways, a wonderful feeling, and to have glitter on your face when nobody in the whole world had ever done it. Nobody, you know, maybe clowns in a circus, but not in, not in a rock and roll sense. Then David came along with his ziggy things and red hair and looked incredibly glamorous, um, and had constantly lots of hits. And Mark wasn't having so many hits. Then it becomes troublesome, and and, and then then he'd sit and say. Well, I suppose if it wasn't for me, none of them would be doing it. Which has an essence of truth in it, you see. Because he did actually stick his neck out. Against all adversity. And it worked. The first time we actually realised he was famous. I mean, it's such a wonderful story. We lived in Little Venice in Clarendon Gardens and we had the two top floors of a nice Georgian house. Rented, I mean, we didn't it, but we rented it. And my girlfriend, Linda Marsh, who lives actually around the corner from here, had the basement. And we realised he was famous when we spent the whole of our summer on our knees, crawling across the drawing room because God forbid we should stand up. The whole street was full of children. I mean, one spent half an hour with Mark, and people were changed. Not because he was dogmatic or dictatorial, or he was special. I 
I mean, when he was 15, he was mod of the year, and he was t so sharp and with his Perry Como haircut and these wonderful suits. And things like that. I mean, long before I knew him. And he had a whole page spread in the magazines, and, things, and he was like where it was at. And then it transferred to music. I mean, he wanted to be. That was it. He wanted to be. Now, whether it was done through fashion, which it did in his early, very young days, then it transferred to music. But, I mean, there are very few people in life that can decide that they want to be famous and actually make it happen. And Mark did that. Pete Sanders, who used to be our photographer, um, or Mark, well, not mine, but Mark's photographer, uh, his parents lived in Surrey, and I had a mini. Like we, we had, Mark and I had a mini in those days. And we went down in the mini, and I said, look, we're in the middle of the country, Mark. Do you get in the driving seat? Right? And I'll show you how to do it. Because he, he did want to learn, but he, you know, if he couldn't, like, hit it on a guitar, it didn't make any sense to him. And so he got into the driver's seat, and I said, no, I'll put, it, put your foot on the clutch, put, say, put his foot on the clutch, and put it into first. And I said, you've got to literally do this. You've got to ease the clutch and press the throttle. And I had my hand on the handbrake, so if anything untoward happened, I'd sort of <laughs> whack on the handbrake. And it was a totally straight road. There was middle of nowhere. And he started to go forwards at about a third of a mile an hour. And then he lifted his clutch foot marginally too fast. And it juddered. And he went, stop it, stop it, I want to get out. And that was it. That was the end of the driving lesson. And he never drove, ever. And that was it.